What's up fellow Squarespacers? In today's video, we're gonna create a stylized pricing table without using any CSS, and I'm gonna sprinkle in some tips and tricks along the way. So I'm gonna start by adding a shape block to this section. I'll scale it up a little bit, and I'll hit G on my keyboard to bring up the grid. Now, this is a 24 column grid, and by default, when you add shapes, there are six columns. And since I want three even items on this 24 column grid, I'm gonna scale up its width so that it's eight columns wide. Next, I'll edit the item and I'm gonna add a corner radius of 30 pixels and that just adds rounded corners to each of the corners. Next, I'll add an image block and scale that up to match the width. I'm gonna select an image that I've already uploaded from my library. It's this blue triangles image and I'll edit it and go to design and then I'll hit fill and that way it fills the frame. So next I'll add a text block and this is gonna be the package title. So I'm gonna call this first package starter. I'll change the color overlay to white and then I'm gonna right align it and also make it a heading four. I'll shrink that a little bit and then I'll add a new text block and this is gonna be the price. So this first one is gonna be $10. I'm gonna change the color override to white. Then I'm gonna use the scale text feature to make it whatever size the frame is. So that way I can make this text much bigger than any of my heading sizes. So this is a great feature when you want, you know, really big, bold text. Next, I'll add another text block and I'll make this text white. And then I'm gonna make this my paragraph three and I'll drag up the bottom of this image. So I've left one grid cell of spacing around everything, so that way the spacing is even. Now, I don't want the gap vertically between each of these cells. These feel a little bit far away to me. So I'm going to click the three dots here and we'll set the vertical spacing to zero and that way everything can kind of like really live next to each other more. The scale text feature can kind of change a little bit. So you, you can see that there's now more space as I updated the the location of this item down here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and center this text. And you can see everything is a little bit more far away, but now the starter is vertically closer to this text title, which I want. Now, one thing I'm noticing is my image block has sharp corners up here and I want them to be rounded. So I'm gonna select the image block and go to design. And I'm gonna click this option so that we can set a corner radius for each of the individual corners. I'm only gonna set a corner radius of 30 pixels for the top two corners. So now we get that rounded effect and then it just goes flat on the bottom, which is exactly what I want. Next, I can add in my features text. So I'm just gonna copy some example text here, just describing how awesome this product is. I'll center everything. And then I also wanna vertically center this text as well. And you can see I've left one grid cell of spacing on the top. So next I'll add a button, drag that down below, and I wanna leave one grid cell of spacing above it and one grid cell of spacing below it. And I'm gonna edit the button and I'm gonna set it to fit and then leave it on centered. So now we have this first item done and you might have an inkling to go ahead and duplicate it and work on the next two. But the problem with that is if you go down to mobile, you now have twice as big of a disaster. So the better thing to do actually is you want to get your mobile order situated before you duplicate a group of blocks. So if I go down to mobile, I can just rearrange everything here before I duplicate it. And that way, once I duplicate this set of blocks, the mobile layout will be duplicated uh, how it should be. Okay, so now that I have the mobile layout arranged, now I can go ahead and select everything and duplicate these blocks. And now for these other two items, the mobile layout of these blocks is also going to duplicate over. So now I have two other versions of this. And if I go down to mobile, you can see perfect. Everything is looking how it should. So I'm gonna select this bottom set of blocks and I'm gonna move it down four grid spaces because I want two grid spaces between each set. So now I can select this middle one and move it down two. And now we have a spacing of two on the top and two on the bottom. Okay, so now I can get into customizing these on desktop. 
And the first thing that I'll do is just kind of update some of the content here. So this is gonna be my basic package. It's gonna be $20 a month. And this one's gonna be my premium package. And it's gonna be $30 a month. Now I also wanna update these images here. So I wanna replace this with a yellow version of these uh, triangles. And that means I'm gonna to have to update this text color. And what I can do is just remove the color override. So if you select the color, we've set it to white previously. If you just hit this clear formatting, it'll set it back to black. So I can do that for each one of these items. And now they go back to black. And then for this one over here, I'm gonna change the image and I'm gonna set it to a black version of the triangles. Okay, perfect. So the last thing that I wanna do is I want this button color to match this color. So this is gonna be our like preferred package. So we want this call to action to stand out a little bit. So what I can do is I can set this button to be a secondary button. And then if I save this, I can go to my color palette in the site styles. So design, site styles, colors. And I can choose the color theme for this section. So this is the lightest one color theme. And now that this is a secondary button, we can give secondary buttons in the lightest one color theme a different style than the primary buttons. So we can give it this yellow background with black text, and now it kind of matches this banner uh, more closely. Looks a little more stylized. Cool, okay, so the last thing that I wanna do is really make this middle package stand out even more. So we can add a little banner that says like, this is the best value package, and then we'll make this one a little bit taller than the others as well. So I'm gonna select everything and move it down one row. And then I'm going to add a new shape block. So this shape block is just gonna be at the top of this cell. And I'm gonna change the color to like a really a custom color and make it like really stand out. So I want it to be kind of like a, a brighter color. Okay, that should be good enough. And I want this to have the 30 pixel rounded edges on the top. And now for this image block, I don't want it to have the rounded edges. So I'm actually gonna change the corner radius to zero for all the corners. Okay, and now for the shape block, I'm gonna drag this all the way up so it's behind the shape. And the reason that I wanna do that is we're gonna add a drop shadow to this shape. So I wanted to, to make sure it the drop shadow gets added behind this top bar as well. Okay, so now I can go ahead and add a text block right up at the top. I'll scale it down and this is gonna say best value. And we can change the color override to white, and then center that. And then I just wanna make sure that it's vertically centered in its container as well. So now this item like really stands out as the best value from the others, and we can even scale this up a little bit as well. Maybe bring down the button, and bring down those features a little bit. So it will make it stand out even more. If I edit this shape block, we can add a drop shadow. So let me turn that on. We'll change the drop shadow color to black. Let's increase the blur just a little bit, and then let's make this much more subtle. So now we get a really subtle drop shadow behind this middle one, which makes it feel like it has more depth, like it's coming off the page compared to the other ones, and uh, that makes it stand out even more. So the last thing that I wanna do is, they're really close together. So I wanna edit the section settings so that the columns have more horizontal space between them. Now, one thing I've learned is to never go above 30. And the reason for that is uh, I'll set it to 35 here and then I'll click save. And I'll show you what happens when you shrink the screen size down. So it's set on 35. As the screen gets smaller and smaller, eventually it hits a point where it just stops scaling. So I've learned just never go above 30 or you can run into this problem where content will get cut off on smaller screen sizes. So it's, it's really just a strange issue. I'm, 
I would think that they would be able to fix that. By the time you're watching this, I hope this is not a problem anymore. And if I save this, you'll see that as I shrink it down, we shouldn't have that problem. It should never get cut off. And so 30 seems to be the sweet spot with like whatever content that you use to where it's never really a problem as far as I can tell. Okay, if I go to the mobile view, I just need to do a little bit of tweaking here to make sure that our top banner is where it's supposed to be on mobile. So let me go ahead and kind of rearrange these blocks a little bit. So I'm gonna select this group of blocks and drag it down two. And now I can take this and I'm just gonna use the arrows to move it up. And it doesn't need to be that tall. I'll make it that tall. And then I'm gonna take the text and I'm gonna use the arrows to move them up as well. Move it up one more. Have it be centered on mobile. And now I can select this and move it back to where it's supposed to go. So leaving two cells of spacing in between and then selecting this bottom table and then leaving two cells of spacing in between and then we can clean up those extra mobile rows on the bottom which we don't need. All right, so now I can save it and we can take one final look at our pricing table that we made. The cool thing is it didn't require any custom CSS and we have a really cool stylized pricing table with one option that really stands out from the rest. I promised you some tips and tricks in this video, so I hope you were able to take away something. If you were, let me know in the comments below. Consider subscribing to the channel for more Squarespace content like this, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.